Here I'm going to go through a Leave Us Our Paper question nine from 2020. It's a question on chemical equilibrium. Now, the equilibrium questions usually follow a pattern. Start with a couple of definition questions, then go into a bit of understanding and some calculation. Now, the first question we're asked here is explain chemical equilibrium. So to understand a chemical equilibrium, you have to understand what happens in a chemical reaction. So we have reactants, which are the chemicals at the start of a reaction that react together and turn into things called products, which are the chemicals that are usually there at the end of the reaction. Now, if the reactants turn into products, but the products can then actually turn back into the reactants, that's where we have a reversible reaction, we call it. Now, if in a reversible reaction, the reactants form products at the same rate at which the products go back and form reactants, then we have an equilibrium setup. So what happens in that case is because the rate of reaction for both is the same, then we have a state where the concentrations of the reactants and the concentrations of the products are constant. They don't have to be the same because equilibrium could be towards one side rather than the other, i.e. you may have more products or you may have more reactants, depending on what you started with and depending on the chemical reaction and depending on the conditions. But the concentrations are constant. So in an equilibrium, what we say is that the rate of the forward and the reverse reaction or backward reaction are equal. So therefore, the concentration of both are constant. Now, why is a chemical equilibrium described as dynamic? It's dynamic because even though you have a constant concentration of reactants and products, the reactions are continuously occurring. So they don't stop. So they constantly happen. Okay, so it's dynamic because both reactions continue. I.e. not static. So the both reactions are happening. State Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, we're often asked to define Le Chatelier's principle. So for Le Chatelier's principle, you have to have a system in equilibrium. Now, if you have a system in equilibrium, what happens is the system will react to oppose any applied stresses. Okay, that's a change in conditions like temperature, pressure, concentration. They are the conditions. But the easiest way to answer this is that when you have a system in equilibrium, the system reacts to oppose or minimize any stress on the system. So it's important to state there, the system in equilibrium will oppose any applied stress to that system. But if you want to write, it'll oppose any change in conditions, you have to label the conditions, temperature, pressure, concentration. Okay, so that's A. Now for B, write the equilibrium constant expression for the reaction above. The equilibrium constant Kc allows us to have a picture of what state the equilibrium is in. So here, Kc is equal to, it's always going to be the concentration of the products, and that's important, concentration. We label concentration as the square brackets here, so you have to include them. Multiplied together. Now it's important to note, if there's any stoichiometric equivalent greater than one, so if there's any number in front of our reactants or products, that number becomes a power in Kc. So if, for example, it was 2H2, I would then put, for Kc, it's a concentration of H2 squared. But I don't need to do that there because there's just a no number in front of it, which implies there's one mole of it. That's divided by the concentration of the reactants, which is CO times H2O. Again, if there was 3H2 or 3CO there, 3 carbon monoxides, I would have to put that that concentration would be cubed, but it's not there, so I don't need to. So here's our calculation. The equilibrium constant for the reaction at 800 Kelvin is four. Now, it stated the temperature there because it's at a constant temperature. We don't need to worry about that. Kc will change with temperature. Kc will not change with other changes of condition. So, and Kp for pressure, we don't worry about that in the leaving cert. So um, we know that Kc is equal to four. Calculate the number of moles of carbon monoxide in this equilibrium mixture at this temperature. Okay, because we're given information at the start of the reaction. So I'm gonna draw a table down here. I'm gonna just move this slightly. So we have our Kc expression. We know that Kc is equal to four. So when you're answering these questions, 
I would write out the equation. So you have carbon monoxide. We have carbon monoxide, we have H2O, we have CO2, and we have H2. They are reactants and products. Now, what we're going to want to do is write what is there at the start. So it's going to be our initial number of moles. So I'll just write this moles at start. So we're told in the question that three moles of carbon monoxide and one mole of steam were mixed together. So I can just fill in this table then. Three moles of carbon monoxide, one mole of water. I'm just going to change the colours. So at the start, we know that there's no carbon dioxide. So this is before they react together, my carbon monoxide and my water. There's, there's just no carbon dioxide and there's no hydrogen present either. So the number of moles of those is zero and zero. The next thing we're going to put in here is the number of moles at equilibrium. So I'm just going to write mole at equal. So now we're asked to calculate the number of moles of carbon monoxide in the equilibrium mixture. All right, so we don't know the number of moles of carbon monoxide. And like in maths or some of the other physical sciences, when you have an unknown, we'll just call it X. So I'm going to say that X moles of carbon monoxide was formed. This is important, and it's important to have a good understanding of stoichiometry here. So go back to the videos on the website, have a look at moles in reactions videos um, to get a better idea here. But if X moles of carbon dioxide were formed, well, looking at the balanced equation, and I can just put this in, it's a one to one to one to one reaction. So if one mole of CO2 were formed, it must have been formed by the reaction of one mole of carbon monoxide and one mole of water. I don't have one mole of carbon dioxide formed, at least I don't think I do at this stage, or I don't know if I do at this stage. I'm just going to say I form X moles of carbon dioxide. That must mean that I form X moles of hydrogen because it's a one to one. And because I formed X moles of carbon dioxide, the initial amount of carbon monoxide, which is three, well, because it's a one to one, then three moles of this was at the start. But at equilibrium, I must have used up X, okay, because it's a one to one reaction. And likewise with water, I had one at the start. So at equilibrium, I must have used up X. So that's 1.0 minus X. Now, here's where we usually put in the concentration. Okay, so I would need to put in concentration at equal. I would need to put in the concentration at equilibrium because the units for Kc, as you can see here, the square brackets in indicate that it's concentration. So it's moles per unit volume. But actually, if you think about this equation here, Kc is equal to concentration. Let's look at the units for concentration. It's going to be some number of moles over a volume times some number of moles over a volume divided by some number of moles over a volume times some number of moles over a volume. That's what concentration is. But because this is an equilibrium system and it's all in one system, the volume is all the same. So the number of moles of everything is going to be different, but the volume is all the same. So actually I can cancel volume. So I don't need to put in concentration. Moles is perfectly good enough. So I don't need to worry about putting that in. So instead of using concentration for Kc, I can just go straight with the number of moles. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up an equation in Kc. I'm told that in the question Kc is 4. So if Kc is equal to this, and I can just write this here, Kc is equal to the concentration of that times that over that times that. Well Kc is 4, so I'm just going to go straight here. Kc is equal to 4, so 4 equals the concentration of CO2, which is x. That's the number of moles, that'll do, times the concentration of hydrogen, which is x. So that dot just means multiplied by over, you can put brackets if you want, over the concentration of carbon monoxide, or I can just use moles, which is 3 minus x over 1 minus x. So I've set up an equation here. 4 equals x squared over 
3 minus x times 1 minus x. Now, here's where your math is going to have to come in handy because we set up a quadratic equation. I'm going to end up using either factors or the minus b formula to work out what x is. So I'm just going to answer that here. So 4 times 3 minus x times 1 minus x equals x squared. So that's 4 outside of 3 minus 3x minus x plus x squared equals x squared. So now I've got 12 minus 16x because minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4x times 4 is minus 16 plus 4x squared equals x squared. I'm going to just bring this over and I'm just going to rearrange. 4x squared minus x squared is 3x squared minus 16x plus 12 equals 0. So here I'm going to end up using, because I'm not going to factorize that easily, I'm going to use the minus b formula. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus over 2a. So a equals 3, b equals minus 16, c equals 12. So when you plug this in, you have x equals 16 plus or minus root 16 by 16, which is 16 squared minus 4 times a, which is 4 times 3, which is 12, times c, which is 12, that's minus 144, all over 6. Okay, so plugging that into your calculator, so if 16 minus this, it's equal to 0 0.9028324. And if it's 16 plus that, we have x equal to 4.43050. So you have two values of x. Obviously, we can't have two values of x for this question. So what usually happens when you have to use quadratic equations to solve a real life problem or a problem in one of the other sciences, we ended up with an extraneous root. So a root that basically can't be true based on the information given. So we need to see which one here is true which one isn't so we know from the table we started with three moles of carbon monoxide and then we used up x of it with water we started with one mole of it and we used up x of it well we couldn't have used up 4.4 moles if we didn't have 4.4 to start with so in this instance 4.4 is just called an extraneous root we just ignore it okay so the answer for x is this okay um, so we know x so therefore we can work out in the original question, we're asked to calculate the number of moles of carbon monoxide in the equilibrium mixture. So it's going to be 3.0, what we started with, minus 0 0.9023. So we end up with a result there of 2.0. We are probably asked to keep this in check to a certain number of decimal places. Let's have a look. No, it just says there. So what I would do is I would look to what they've given us at the start, the number of significant figures. So you have 3.0 moles of carbon monoxide and 1.0 moles of steam. So what I'm going to do is just leave that to two significant figures. So that's equal to 2.1 mole of CO because that's the best level of accuracy we can leave it to because they only gave us two significant figures to start with so we therefore have to leave it to two significant figures 2.1 there's some more questions here so I'm just going to tidy this up so predict the effect if any of adding more steam on the value of Kc well Kc actually stays the same it only changes with temperature so while adding more steam will force the equilibrium go in the forward direction or favor the forward reaction it will make more of carbon dioxide and of h2 the reason equilibrium positions move is to keep kc constant so we know here that kc not change on the equilibrium yield of hydrogen yes well the amount of hydrogen will increase that's because the system opposes the change and so favors the forward reaction State and explain the effect on the value of Kc of increasing the equilibrium temperature. Here we will see a change in Kc. 
Now, the forward reaction is exothermic because the energy change there is negative. If the energy change is negative, that means I'm going from reactions to products, we release energy into the surroundings. So, if I increase the temperature on this reaction, the system wants to decrease the temperature. If the system decreases the temperature, it can only do that by favoring backward reaction, or favoring the reverse. If it favors the reverse reaction, so that reaction is favored, then if it favors the backward reaction, we make more of CO and H2O. In essence, on KC, we're making more of this stuff. So we're getting a larger denominator, in our fraction, so therefore Kc must be getting smaller. So here Kc decreases because the backward reaction is favoured, because that's the endothermic one, because it's opposing the change. And if the backward reaction is favoured, more of the reactants are being made, and so in the Kc expression we actually form more of the denominator, which makes Kc smaller. So that is that question. There.